From Nordic Institute and the Rural Agri Innovation Network, the PACSAC project is all about exploring the essential relationships, attitudes, and mindsets that Northern communities need as we adapt to change and challenges. Today, we explore innovations in Northern health education with the Northern Ontario School of Medicine University. Since we recorded this episode, they became the first independent medical university in Canada. Here's today's host, Dr. Gail Broad. The topic of this podcast today is innovations in health education that contribute to the development of a culturally responsive healthcare system for Northern Ontario. And our guest today is Dr. Catherine Chervin, who's the Vice Dean Academic of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. And she's also a past president of the College of Family Physicians of Canada. I first met Dr. Catherine Chervin many years ago when she was a family doctor in Timmins and then later in Sault Ste. Marie. And over many years of working together, we found that we have a number of common interests, particularly in addressing educational needs of all kinds of students. In Dr. Chervin's case, of course, particularly medical students but all kinds of students about the cultural context of the region of Northern Ontario, that being Northern, rural and Indigenous communities. Um, And of course, with a a heavy Indigenous and Francophone communities across the North, um, that's heavily reliant on resource extractive industries. One of the commonalities that Dr. Turvin and I found was in our determination that women's health in particular would be addressed within this region and within this cultural context. So welcome, Dr. Turvin, and to our podcast series. And uh, perhaps you could start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and the key experiences that have influenced your approach or beliefs or values to the practice of family medicine. Thank you very much, Gail, and I'm delighted to be part of this podcast, which is uh, focusing in a holistic way on the health of Northern Ontario, the health of the people and the health of the communities. So I first felt a connection to Northern Ontario when I was 18. I grew up in Southern Ontario, never really felt that I really belonged there. And my first trip uh, driving north and seeing the beautiful lakes and rocks and trees and wilderness, I really felt at that time that I was coming home in an unusual way because I'd never really been there before. And that connection and attachment to Northern Ontario stayed with me throughout my university career in medical school. I went to medical school in the University of Toronto And I'd always envisioned myself practicing in Northern Ontario and ideally in a rural community. So once I finished residency, which I did in Nova Scotia, I came back to Northern Ontario with my partner at the time, who was also a family doctor. And we traveled across Northern Ontario looking for a community that might like to employ us. And we went to Marathon, we went to Elliott Lake, we went to Espanola, and we went to Timmins. And Timmins really bent over backwards to welcome us. They invited us out for dinner. I remember there was a huge group around the table. It included the mayor of Timmins. I remember specifically someone saying we'd stand on our heads to get doctors to come to Timmins. And that welcome and support was really what uh, clinched the deal for us. So we began practice in Timmins. And I will say that Timmins was a fantastic place to begin practice as a new graduate because there was a very collegial group of family physicians There was at least one of every specialty, so I never felt that I was out on a limb without support. And at the same time, I was able to practice everything that I'd been trained to do. And we did full scope family practice, worked in the hospital, the emergency department, delivered babies, assisted in the operating room when our patients were having uh, surgery. And then in, I can't remember the exact year, but it was probably 1980 at an Ontario-wide health conference. I think it was a women's health conference. And a group of us from Northern Ontario connected. 
And that was where you and I met Gail. From then on began my education in the social determinants of health. It wasn't labeled that at the time, but also at that time in my own practice, I discovered that a lot of people had challenges and difficulties that really I could not address as a family doctor because what people needed was safe housing, a better job, more money, an ability to leave an unsatisfactory or even violent relationship, more mental health supports. So the support and learning that happened over the next several years for me with the group of women that organized the Northern Ontario Women's Conferences was really an eye-opener and launched me on really what has been the defining foundation of my career, which is a search for social justice, a search for improving health equity. And another thing I learned, which is now a common theme in many interactions that underserved groups have with various governments, et cetera, was people who are being affected by policy decisions, by health decisions, by organizations, need to have a voice. So it's nothing about us without us. And that was something I learned as part of the Northern Ontario Women's Conferences and has stayed with me ever since. So you've laid out what some of the challenges for a family doctor are, certainly, as they start practicing. And I really appreciate that, as well as some of the challenges for Northern Ontario itself and in terms of equity of access and equity of outcomes in, in health care. Today, we're hearing an awful lot about the family doctor shortage across the region. Despite the establishment of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, and I know it's done a lot to try to address that shortage, and yet it still seems that many communities are crying out for better access to family doctors. Can you tell us a little bit about what that challenge looks like and what NASM has done to address that shortage of family doctors? Yes, I certainly can. As probably many people know, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine was established in 2002 as a government strategy to address the physician shortage across Northern Ontario. And it was established through a community movement, including First Nations communities across Northern Ontario. And the mayors of the municipalities got together and there was tremendous political pressure brought to bear and NASM was established. And we have been successful in many ways, largely in the more urban, the larger centers of Northern Ontario. So since the charter class began at NASM in 2005, and there have been 780 graduates from the MD program, 55 of those self-identify as Indigenous and 165 self-identify as Francophone. Also, 692 residents, those are the um, postgraduate learners who residency is anywhere from two to five years of a practice and training in a specific discipline to become a family physician or a general surgeon or an internist. So we have had 692 residents, and more than half of those residents are now practicing in Northern Ontario. And one more thing that I should mention, because we are a medical school, we also are involved in training other health care professionals, and specifically a dietetic students. There are 78 of the 148 uh, dietetic students who have gone through NASM who are now also practicing in Northern Ontario. The majority of the people who have graduated from NASM are practicing in the larger urban centers, and there's still a dire need in our rural areas. Again, there are NASM graduates in the rural communities, but not yet nearly enough. This is data as of June 2021, so a little bit out of date, and the numbers may be even uh, worse than what they were in June 2021, given COVID and everything. 
There was a need for 326 physicians across the north. We need 135, and 97 of those are needed in rural areas. We need rural generalist uh, family doctors. And then we need specialists in many disciplines, particularly uh, psychiatry and the other general specialties. So that's where we are now in terms of need and how NASM has contributed to the solution. We've done well, and there's still a lot more to do. Okay, so that's quite a challenge that not only NASM but our communities across the north are facing. I know that NASM has done, you mentioned earlier in the interview about some of the things that you learned after you started practicing. But I know that NASM has also been an innovator in terms of bringing a number of new concepts, maybe not brand new, but maybe some old concepts into the education of family physicians as well so that they can be better prepared when they begin their practice to meet the needs in rural areas. Could you talk a little bit about some of those innovations that the Northern Ontario School of Medicine has made into the education of family doctors in particular that may better prepare them for the work they're going to be facing? Yes, NASM, when it began, was very innovative in a number of ways for the MD program. And two things are really worth highlighting. One is that, and still to this day, every single medical student at NASM spends four weeks in their first year in a remote Indigenous community where they live in the community. And that is a cultural immersion experience and really helps ground medical students in the reality of life and health care in Indigenous communities. So that is one particular innovation that NASM has had from the beginning. As well, all our third-year medical students who in their first two years are primarily based in Sudbury and Thunder Bay, for eight months of their third year, they live and work and learn in a community outside of Sudbury and Thunder Bay. It's called a longitudinal integrated clerkship. So they're based in family medicine, and they also learn about the other specialties through various additional experiences. And then I think some of the most important recent innovations are the rural generalist pathway and the Indigenous people's health and wellness pathway. And we will begin next year in 2022 the francophone pathway. These pathways begin before medical school and go through right into practice. The rural generalist pathway has been under development for several years now. It is the most advanced. So it starts with admissions where students are chosen who have a particular aptitude or interest in rural practice. And once they start on that path, they have extra support in terms of mentorship by rural generalist physicians. They will have extra courses and skills. They will have specific placements in rural communities. All NASA medical students do have a rural experience, usually in their first year. But the rural generalist pathway students will have an intensified rural experience. Similarly, as the indigenous pathway develops, there will be specific experiences that those students will have. Then there's extra support provided to rural generalist pathway students as they transition into the residency program, and then as they transition from residency to practice in the community. That means extra support, mentorship, coaching, whatever they need to be successful. And finally, what we envision at the end of the pathway is an attractive practice with a strong team, and also because all the physicians across Northern Ontario are also the NASM faculty members and clinical teachers. So many of our graduates become our faculty members. So 
we want people to be able to have academic careers wherever they practice, in whatever community, and whatever location. Now, I find this quite fascinating to hear how it's being implemented in terms of actually shifting and perhaps adding to the um, capacity of the students to really respond to the communities they're placed in. I know that when COVID happened, when the pandemic hit, that NASM was quite involved with setting up some of the testing sites and treatment. Perhaps you could just uh, briefly tell us a little bit about how they were able to respond so quickly. So, yes, NASM has been involved in many aspects of responding to COVID and maybe the biggest and earliest, probably one of the most important was Operation Remote Immunity, which was run by Orange, the um, emergency services across Ontario. Orange organized teams to go into all the remote First Nations to vaccinate the eligible population. So it was a huge undertaking at the beginning of the pandemic. And NASM participated in the majority of the teams that were deployed to vaccinate. So that included our students, our staff, the faculty. And it was, for many people, a transformative experience to be part of a team in that way, to be providing direct service to communities in need. There was a strong cultural component to that in terms of education of every person who was deployed and strong collaboration with the communities so that the communities, the elders, the community leaders were really part of the uh, oversight leadership and direction of Operation Remote Immunity. That was one of the better and more successful projects related to COVID that uh, NASA was part of. And also students and residents have volunteered in vaccination clinics. Some of our students have previous healthcare backgrounds. They were nurses or paramedics or respiratory therapists. They went back to work in their other health professional role during the pandemic. Thank you. Now you've been talking a lot about this integration of the family doctor into the community and, and that last example of some of the work that NASM has done to really coordinate between education and community is very illustrative of that innovation in the education of family doctors. But education, it seems to me, is just one piece of the equation and that certainly NASM seems to be doing a really good job of fulfilling that role. I wonder if you could give us an example or two or suggestions of innovative ways that our community members, Northern Rural and Indigenous communities, can make rural practice more appealing to family doctors so that even more of your graduates will come out and work in the smaller rural communities. Yes, so one of the things that Dr. Verma, who became the Dean at NASM in 2019, initiated soon after she arrived was to hire an associate dean of physician workforce strategy. So Dr. Sarah Newberry, who is a rural generalist uh, family doctor in Marathon, is that associate dean. And she has been working very hard in a number of areas to support communities, to enhance education and placements for students and residents, to attract particularly residents in family medicine from other schools to come north for electives. And Marathon itself is a success story in terms of being able to attract physicians to work there. And it really has been a whole community effort. The Marathon established a recruitment committee, a recruitment group, and they focused on sort of the full meal deal. When physicians are considering coming to a community, it's, of course, not just the physician, it's their, it's their whole family. It's the collegiality of the team that's working there. It's the life opportunities that are available, 
housing is often a significant issue, both for a learner who is coming to a community, a student or a resident, there needs to be housing in place. And NOSM does provide housing for students and learners in many communities. We are not always able to provide family housing, but sometimes communities will be able to provide housing. And that's what Marathon has done both for learners and for physicians who are new in practice. And then it's just the general sense, particularly for a learner, of making them feel welcome from the time they arrive so that their experience is positive and they then would be interested in returning to that community to practice. Sort of like making sure that there's a good cup of coffee available or a, uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. or a nice ski trail, perhaps. <laughs> exactly. So, Kathy, I want to sort of wrap up with you now, and I wonder, just reflecting back on your history of involvement in family medicine in, in Northern Ontario and, and your engagement with several communities across the region and organizations, do you have any final thoughts to share with us on what innovations you see are needed? Like we have some very big issues facing communities across the North. We have, you mentioned earlier, I think climate change and we're still in dealing with the pandemic and perhaps we can expect that there's going to be lots of changes still coming at us. Do you, when you reflect upon your experience, what are your thoughts that about how we can better do this so that folks can access a more holistic approach to their health when they go to see their family doctor. Shortly after Dr. Verma became dean, she launched a strategic planning process. And I think our strategic plan is the great roadmap for the future of Northern Ontario. And maybe what I'll say first is we're really planning and hoping that NASA will be able to expand, that we will be able to have more medical students, more residents, we'll be able to train residents in more disciplines. We currently uh, train residents in eight different disciplines. And the evidence is that if a student from NASA also does their residency at NASA, then 90% of those people who do both undergrad and residency at NOSM stay in the north. So we need to provide more opportunities for a larger variety of residency programs. So that's one thing I would say in terms of innovation is expansion. And we also, maybe by the time this uh, podcast airs, we will be NOSM University. We're on track to become the first ever medical university in Canada. As a university, we will be able to have a stronger regional partnerships. We will still always be strongly connected to Thunder Bay and to Sudbury. And we will be able to connect with teaching sites, with hospitals, with post-secondary institutions across Northern Ontario. So we can really see NOSM thriving in all the communities of Northern Ontario and being even more responsive and more engaged with communities to address both their health needs and also their research needs so that we can work with communities to answer the health research questions that communities have. And we can envision ourselves down the road expanding to train more other healthcare professionals, not in competition with any of the other post-secondary institutions, but really complementing what health professions education exists currently. And uh, we have a strong focus. I'm glad you mentioned climate change because part of our strategic plan really has health and wellness, respect for people, respect for the environment. We have a climate change committee at NOSM, and we have signed on to the Okanagan Charter, which is an international charter that commits in post-secondary institutions to health and wellness and health promotion. So it includes the health of the people, the health of the population, the health of the environment. 
I think the future is very bright for Nossam University in Northern Ontario. We are committed to partnerships, to co-creation of education and solutions that are designed by the North, in the North, for the North. I think that's a wonderful place to end our conversation today. Thank you so much for being a part of our PACSAC project and being with us today and taking the time to share what Nozen's contribution is, has been, and can be in the future. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. So join us again where we'll be speaking with other Northern entrepreneurs and organizations. We'd love to hear what you think about today's episode. We're on Facebook and Instagram at The Packsack Project, and you can also find us on Twitter at The Packsack Pod. If you're not on social media, you can email us at packsackproject at gmail.com. To find more episodes of The Packsack Project, head to nordicinstitute.com, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcast. Today's episode was edited by Grace Zhang and music from Frank Duresti. Thanks for joining us.